circuits. The I.O. circuit and clock generation and distribution circuits are essential to VLSI chip design. Uh, the design quality and the structure of this circuit is a critical factor that actually determines the reliability of an IC. It also decides the signal integrity and interchip communication speed of an IC. It also provides protection to the IC. Uh, it also decides with other tech, uh, what technolo other technology the IC will be compatible with. Uh, so, if you look at the protection aspect of this, then uh, if we consider the packaging of an IC is a protection layer of a silicon chip, then input output circuits or uh, we can uh, call them as IO frame in general. Uh, having different input and output circuit and the clock circuits can be considered as a second layer of protection. Uh, any external hazard such as electrostatic discharge uh, or noise, it will be filtered out before reaching it to the internal circuits of an IC. Uh, and the compatibility, also uh, we know that the many times uh, if we have a MOS IC, it has to communicate uh, with uh, various different ICs of various different technology, like it might has to uh, communicate with the TTL IC or uh, ECL, that is emitter coupled logic IC or bipolar IC. In that case, input output circuit provides a uh, proper level shifting so that uh, the signal of different IC technology can be compatible with each other. Uh, so that's the importance of these IO circuits and the clock generation. Uh, then there is another circuit which uh, is clock circuit. The clock uh, normally in VLSI chip we have uh, uh, it receive a clock signal from a clock common clock source and then it generates the derivative of that clock signal for different internal blocks. Uh, for example, if I have uh, a clock uh, generation block of 100 megahertz, then uh, that will be a common for a complete IC. And then at for a different block, uh, that clock frequency will be converted to the various other frequency. For example, suppose for a particular block need a 20 kilohertz, 20 megahertz frequency, then uh, then that 100 megahertz frequency will be converted to 20 megahertz frequency. Uh, so basically, we have, will have a common clock source, and then we will have a different derivative of the clock signal for various blocks in an I, uh, in an IC. Uh, ideally, this clock should be called a clock module, that is clock generation module should be at the center of the chip. Uh, but normally it is placed along with the IO, uh, IO circuits in the IO frame. Uh, it is not at the center, but it is placed near IO frame. Uh, because uh, the wire bonding constraint, uh, majorly if the, uh, essentially if the clock circuit is at the center, then uh, the delay which is induced for, for the transmission of clock signal from uh, the generation unit to the different unit will be equal if it is at the center. Uh, that's one something uh, one should focus on. But uh, due to wire bonding concerns, we have to place it near the uh, I.O. frame. Uh, there, Of course, there are various IC technologies or advanced techniques by virtue of which we can have IC uh, clock generation uh, at the unit at the center of an IC. Uh, so that's about the introduction of IO circuits and clock generation and distribution circuit. Uh, so this is an integral part of uh, almost every VLSI circuit and this should be uh, studied separately. Uh, of course this uh, if every uh, topic is a different subject of study. So we'll focus on electrostatic protection, which is uh, essentially uh, one of the important aspect of IO frame. Electrostatic discharge is uh, one of the most prevalent cause for uh, chip failure in both uh, chip manufacturing as well as during the field operation. Uh, of course, in the transportation as well. ESG, that is electrostatic discharge, uh, occurs when a charge stored in machine or human body are discharged to the chip uh, when there is a contact between human body or a machine within chip. And uh, due to this, there is a static induction which may lead to large current 
a large electricity and which may result in the failure of an IC. Uh, so uh, there are three categories we can say of electrostatic discharge. Uh, one based on how the electrostatic discharge happen. One is due to human, uh, second is due to machine and third is due to charge device. Uh, so let's look at these three uh, types in detail. So these are three testing models. Uh, the first one is human body uh, model, uh, second is machine model and third one is charge device model. Okay. Uh, this is a human body model. Uh, now when a human uh, walks typically on a synthetic carbon and let's consider the humidity is around 80 percent then uh, potentially it can genera uh, generate or induce electrostatic voltage of 1.5 kilo volt and if a such person uh, touches that IC then it can generate a large current in an IC which may lead to the failure of an IC and this is uh, this can be simulated by uh, discharging a 100 picofarad capacitor through 1.5 kilo ohm resistor uh, uh, now uh, we know that human body presence uh, has some resistance which is represented by this uh, resistance 1.5 kilo ohm and 100 picofarad basically acts as a human body which has gained some charge due to uh, static electricity. Now uh, uh, how it, the testing is done is uh, first the switch is kept in the first position so that the capacitor will be charged through uh, a, a voltage supply and then it, the switch is moved to the position 2 and then a large charge uh, which is uh, which is stored on the capacitor tries to discharge through this 1.5 kilo ohm resistor and uh, through the device the DUT stands for device and the test so we can test this device whether it will be able to sustain uh, the static charge developed by the human body uh, so we should have uh, enough protection or protection network that can withstand around uh, 8 kilovolt stress. So we'll see such uh, structures or circuits uh, in detail in the same lecture. So this is human body model. Uh, the second model is machine model. Uh, now when human comes in contact with the uh, IC then the human body can discharge through the uh, IC or through the circuit. Similarly, there are various machines uh, which also gain some charge and when they come in contact with the IC, they may discharge through this IC. The effect is more severe because human body had some uh, resistance whereas machine they do not have any body resistance. So the effect will be severe. Here, uh, this machine discharge or machine model uh, basically represents uh, the discharge of a char uh, discharge of a machine through DUT. Now to test it, to test the device, what we can do is we can charge this capacitor of 200 picofarad. So in human body model, if you remember, it was 100 picofarad, and in uh, machine model, 200 picofarad. That means a machine can gain more charge than a human body. Also, it does not have resistance at it was there. Uh, in human body model because human body has some resistance so it is represented by 1.5 kilo ohm. Here there is no resistance because body of a machine does not have any resistance. So what we will do is first uh, we will make this switch to be at position 1 and this capacitor will charge will be charged and then it will be shifted to position 2. So the capacitor will be discharged through this uh, DUT or device under test. So we will check whether still the device can sustain this huge charge uh, which it has gained from this capacitor. Okay, so this is how we can test uh, whether our IC uh, can sustain the discharge because of the other machine. Uh, along with these uh, two types human body and the machine uh, the third model is a charge device model. Uh, it is basically uh, intended to model the discharge of the package integrated circuit. That means the charge can be accumulated on the package of an IC 
during the assembly process or during the shipping as well now uh, whether our ic is able to sustain that charge we can test by using this charge device model so in this case uh, uh, what is done is uh, electrically the device is charged and then it is discharged to the ground so here you can see there is a one switch by using this the, the device is charged because it has package that may gain some charge and then what we will do is uh, we will discharge it to the ground through the discharge probe and if the uh, we will check whether this device is able to sustain this uh, charge or not so this is how it can be uh, tested for charge device model so basically the idea here is we are trying to model different scenarios where a capacitor or oh, sorry where a, a device has to go through electrostatic stress and the electrostatic stress can be caused due to human due to machine or the package of the ic itself and whether it is uh, whether it can sustain through this distress or uh, through this stress we are basically uh, checking that or testing that using these three models uh, now there can be a common model which basically represent uh, represented using a uh, lumped element and it represent both uh, human body model and machine model if you are basically the circuit is same uh, and the various values of these lumped, lumped uh, components is shown here so we know that in the earlier model we have seen that for human body the capacitance was 100 picofarad and for uh, the machine model is 200 picofarad so this is a common circuit uh, you, by changing by replacing the component which can be used for both human body model as well as machine model so uh, that's the uh, that's about the how the charge is induced or what is the uh, it can be modeled for testing now what exactly is the effect of this electrostatic discharge now here it can be seen that uh, there is a melting of a metal okay the metal contact get melted and because of this you can see the drain and source are shorted permanently so it can be seen uh, with uh, the uh, this image over here which basically uh, shows the image captured by ACM that is scanning electron microscope uh, here you can see the uh, the distress shown over here the metal get melted so that's the and it may lead to the uh, unwanted operation of an IC and it may uh, result in failure of the operation of an IC so that's why we have to avoid this ESD failure so what are the circuits that can be used for avoiding this electrostatic discharge that we are going to see here in protect uh, in protection network okay uh, so here uh, basically the protection network this is the simplest or the most uh, basic circuit which can be used uh, for the electrostatic uh, protection of an ic from the electrostatic discharge now you have you can see there's an input pin and within so this is how ic will look like and within the ic you will have this protection network which is normally denoted by uh, represented with this pn or protection network and this is the simplest of the circuits uh, it basically consists of diffuse resistor uh, and the diode structure uh, this input resistor is a diffuse resistor so it is uh, fabricated using uh, polysilicon. Uh, it is typically in the range of 1 to 3 kilo ohm uh, and this resistor along with the com capacitance of this diffuse resistor itself, capacitance of this uh, diode uh, which are connected here. In the combination with these capacitance, this resistor uh, basically acts as a clamping network and which clamps the voltage which will be applied to the internal circuit to uh, uh, to the certain level so that the internal circuit doesn't have to go through a larger voltage stress uh, of course uh, the because there is a rnc or the rc network uh, it may uh, lead to the delay as well so once you get the input at the input pin and because of this rc delay of this circuit uh, you may get a delayed input to your internal circuit so it should be taken care of while designing these circuits 
is an important aspect one should focus on. Now let's look at the working of this. Okay. Suppose the voltage at this input pin is uh, logic zero. That is, let's consider it's zero point three volt. Okay. So if zero point three volt is there, so this capacitor, oh uh, sorry, this diode, uh, it is off. Right. This diode is also off, and uh, this diode is also off. So zero point three volt. Will be given to the input circuit, which is logic zero, right? Uh, so logic zero, which is well within the limit, can be uh, given to the or applied to the internal circuit. So let's assume that our voltage range is uh, logic zero is zero volt and uh, logic one is five volt. Now let's consider logic one is applied to the input of an IC, and let's consider the voltage to be four point eight volts. Right. Now in this case, uh, let's consider if it's 4.8 volts. So this uh, diode is on. This diode is also on, while this diode is off. Now because these diodes, both these diodes are on, so uh, they will present a very small voltage drop across it. Right. And the 5 volt voltage, if we consider VDL to be 5 volt, right, we will have we will have logic one voltage without any uh problem over here right uh sorry uh not actually uh let's consider again the case again logic one is applied and we we have 4.8 volt over here so in this case this transistor is off if you consider vdd to be 5 volt that was a mistake i didn't consider vdd so this diode will be off this diode will be off and this diode will be off so all the three diodes will be off Right, because the voltage drop across this is not 4.0.7, uh, so these all these diodes are off. Right, so 4.8 volt will be applied here to the input circuitry. That is, logic one will be applied. So we have seen that when it is 0.3, logic zero will be applied to the internal circuit. When it is 4.8, that is, logic one is applied to the internal circuit. So it's working fine for uh, the voltages within the range. Now let's consider if the voltage here. Is uh, let's say minus one volt. So we are expecting to have voltage between zero volt to five volt, but we have voltage minus one volt. Now when minus volt appear here, this diode is off, this diode is off, but then this diode is on. As this diode is on, now this is connected essentially to the ground. That means uh, you will have uh, uh, ideally you will have zero volt over here. But because there will be some voltage drop across this diode, so you will have minus 0.7 volt. Okay, uh, so the maximum voltage that can be applied to the input will be minus 0.7. Even if you have minus 10 volt, say, so this diode will be off, this diode will be off, this diode will be off. But still, voltage which will be applied to the internal circuit will be limited to minus 0.7. So here you can see uh, if you have negative voltage, uh, very large negative voltage at the input, still. Voltage applied to the circuitry, internal circuitry will be limited to minus 0.7 volt. Considering, assuming the voltage uh, or the peak voltage of the diode to be 0.7 volt. Now let's consider the fourth case. So in the first case, we consider the voltage to be uh, 0.3, which is within well within the range. Second was 4.8, which was fine. Third, we consider minus 10, let's say minus 10 volt. Uh, so it was uh, it was protected, and the voltage was 0.7. When it was 4.8, 4.8 was applied to the input. When it was 0.3, 0.3 was which is applied to the input. Uh, sorry, which was applied to the actual IC. And this is the input voltage, right? Uh, now let's consider the voltage of the input pin is 10 volt. But now uh, we assume the range to be 0, 0.0 to 5 volt. Now it is well beyond the uh, 5 volt. So in this case, this will be on. This will be on. This will be off. So because these are on, so they basically act, ideally they act as a short circuit. So the voltage drop across, uh, vo voltage that will appear here will be VDD. So ideally it has to be 5 volt. Uh, but practically it will be 5 volt plus some drop across this which will be 0 0.7. So voltage that will actually apply to the internal circuitry will be 5.7 volt. Right. So if your voltage is 10 volt, which is large positive voltage, then it will be limited to 5.7 volt. So we can see here uh, that if the voltage goes beyond the range, 
a safe uh, range of this uh, circuit it will be clamped okay so the minimum voltage that will be applied is 0.7 and uh, a maximum voltage or the negative uh, voltage is 0.7 or the maximum positive voltage that will be applied uh, to the input let's consider the input of this ic is uh, let's consider va so your va is uh, between minus 0.7 and vdd plus 0.7 volt so in this way you can see the maximum voltage uh, that can reach to this will be limited so even if because of electrostatic discharge let's say very large voltage is applied generated over here let's consider even the 50 volt is generated over here still the maximum voltage that will reach here will be always vdd plus 0.7 so the circuit can be protected from the uh, large voltage or large voltage distress generated at the input pin but again uh, here uh, we have to consider breakdown of this diode and we have to protect this diode from uh, current damage due to current which is flowing through this diode and we have to limit the current through uh, to few milliampere because uh, when the diode is in reverse bias a larger current uh, may uh, make uh, may cause the permanent diode damage to the diode uh, so we have to limit the current uh, even the polysilicon resistor uh, which is here which can also fail due to electrostatic breakdown so basically it's a polysilicon and the uh, the large voltage can uh, cause the catastrophic breakdown of this polysilicon so to avoid this uh, or remedy to the problem of this polysilicon breakdown and the limitation of current uh, this arrangement is used in the circuit so here uh, this protection network consists of a thick oxide transistor so here there are two transistor m1 and m2 these are the two transistor which are thick oxide transistor and which have a uh, threshold uh, 20 volt and 30 volt respectively and there is another transistor m3 which is thin oxide transistor now let's see how these circuits work and how this protects the internal circuit uh, from the uh, voltage dis uh, voltage stress now this is a protection network and after this there will be some circuit which will be having a uh, MOSFET structure or something so this is the internal circuit the actual logic of your IC will be here and the protection network is trying to protect that from the uh, large positive voltage or the negative voltage now let's uh, look at try to understand the working of this so uh, again we will consider VDD to be 5 volt for the sake of explanation and the range we will assume to be between 0 to 5 volt okay so here let's consider what happens if the voltage applied here is let's say logic 0 uh, means uh, let's assume it to be 0.4 volt now when 0.4 volt is applied here right uh, you can see uh, this transistor is essentially off because its threshold is in the range of 30 volt so it's off right uh, this m1 uh, is connected to ground and it is off so this is also off so then 0.4 voltage will be applied here now here uh, the gate of this is connected to uh, this uh, same voltage so this is also off uh, so voltage that will appear here will be 0.4 volt that is logic 0 right so when it is well within the range uh, the same voltage will be applied here okay now let's consider if we have uh, now we know that 0, 0.0 to 5 volt and this is 5 volt uh, now let's consider the voltage applied is 4.8 volt in this case also this is off this is also off and uh, these diodes of course these are also off in earlier cases the diodes were also off now here the same voltage will appear here now here uh this is on and because this is on so it will pull it high so logic one will be applied right so that is also fine so we try to apply logic one and then we have actually logic one at the input and then through pn uh, it protects the network and uh, send the same logic to the digital logic uh, of your ic now let's consider third case where 
a large negative voltage is applied minus 10 volt or minus 20 volt let's assume minus 20 volt is applied so in this case you can see here this will be off right uh, but here uh, this transistor will be on right this diode is also on because minus the cathode is at the uh, negative potential is minus 20 and VS is that is ground is zero so this is also on this is also on so these trans diodes are on this transistor is also on and so it will try to pull this voltage to the zero so if it is minus 20 it will protect at minus 20 and it will try to pull it to the zero volt so this uh, it will be protected from the large negative voltage now let's consider the fourth case where large positive voltage is applied at the input pin so let's consider plus 20 volt is applied now let's consider plus 40 volt is applied so if plus 40 volt is applied to the input then what will happen is this will be off uh, this will be off this will be off but this will be on right so as this is on so it will try to pull this to the ground right so because of this it will pull this try to pull this to the ground of course the current will flow through this and the extra voltage that will be uh, we have will get uh, uh, will be potential will be potential drop because r1 and this resistor rear diffuse resistor so uh, some voltage will appear here and this will turn this transistor on and because of this it will short this to vdd and logic one that is 5 volt will be applied to the internal circuitry so we have seen four cases here uh, when the voltage was well within the range that is 0.4 volt same voltage will go to the input that is to, to the gate uh, of the internal logic uh, when we had 4.8 same voltage approximately same voltage that is vdd up to vdd will go to the uh, internal logic when it was minus 30 or minus 20 large negative voltage uh, it will uh, apply 0 volt to the internal logic when we had large positive voltage that is around 40 volt uh, almost VDD that is 5 volt will be applied to the input of the uh, IC logic so this is uh, the way in which uh, basically this protection network protects the internal logic of your IC uh, so this is the protection network so that's all about the protection network and the electrostatic discharge Thank you.